Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily talk, daily talk my daily chat. Um, today's topic, before I jump into who I am and everything else, is um, this is episode number 458. And the topic today is men, women and power. So this is going to be fun, I think. Maybe provocative, we'll see. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for being with me. Let me choose myself and get started with this. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day for the last year and several months, I do a talk called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 458, so I've done a lot of these. And the topic today, as I mentioned, is men, women, and power. So, um, some things that provoked this topic, because these topics are usually provoked, inspired, or generated by something, was a lunchtime conversation I had with, with a friend that I got to know about two hours ago um, that brought up this topic. And I realized I've been sitting on this one for a while because I've talked about things recently about respect and um, this acceptance of ourselves and each other in different flavors. But I already get the sense now there's a piece in this talk about which is power. Because power has other things associated with it, like control, like winner-loser, like corruption of power, like, um, well, we'll see what else comes up, shall we? So let's get into this. First of all, let me qualify this. This whole thing is about men and women, meaning in interaction as well as in relationships. So not all of this is relationship-centric, although some of it will be for sure. There is a, there is a, how do I introduce this one now? <laughs> Let me put it this way. Oh boy, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm watching how to unpack this without becoming very crude and very blunt. So give me a second as I reframe this in a way that can be more PG rated at least. Let me just, okay, let me start another way. I was, I was sitting with it. It wasn't going that way, so that's why I was pushing it. Let me start again. So, <laughs> everybody has power. Let's start with that, okay? Let's, let's put an even strength. Because the, the, the biggest problem of all is that that's not a, a belief that's well known or accepted or appreciated, is that we all, as in men and women, have equal power. Because most men would think that women don't have any power. And a lot of women think they don't have any power. And that's baloney, to be polite. Again, PG rated. Um, my the best way I can put this is that power is something that is that which moves us and gives us impetus and impact in the world. Great, that sounds wonderful. <sighs> However, in relationship in particular, there is a tendency and an archetype that we're hopefully growing out of where men would not ex would not accept, respect, or honor women's power. In fact, when women got, to, when women demonstrated, not got, when women demonstrated her power, she'd be called, I'll use the term, a bitch, or um, a nag, or an attention grabber, or something else demeaning, because a lot of women were around men who didn't understand what power was from women. And, and this is another thing, by the way, power in men and power in women is different. Equal but different. Same as men and women are equal but different. People can argue with me on that one as well. In Friday's broadcast, two days ago, I think it was, I was speaking about an article that I had been um, that I writ I, I'd read, didn't write, but I read and I posted. I did a Facebook Live about it because there was a lot of dialogue in the comments below that post that were attacking of the author of the article because it was about a woman who, to some eyes, looked at being very um, wounded and hurt by men and so she was declaring herself that she was never going to go out with an asshole again and she's going to say I'm, I'd rather be single than to go out with an asshole that's kind of a framing well I see that in a lot of ways for women who've been in that experience because a lot of my clients have been through this where they don't want to, they'd rather be single than date men like the ones they've dated is that women are finding this to get their power back and owning their power upsets a lot of men I'm going to be clear about this there are a lot of men who don't accept you having your power ladies so we know Personally, I'm a big fan of having their power. That's why I'm talking about this. And if you know my talks and watch me talk and you know my life and what I'm about, 
you know that I'm a great deal of service and support for women who express their power. But a lot of men don't. And this becomes a very um, messy experience in relationship in particular. Thank you, Michelle. You love how I show up in the world. It's my passion <laughs> and my purpose and my power as well. <clears throat> so let me stay on track, though. Thank you for that feedback. I appreciate it. So power in women is something that has been suppressed and ignored and berated for generations. And nowadays, especially because of the, partly, not especially of, partly because of the Me Too, thank you, uh, I'm glad it shows, um, because of the Me Too conversation, women have been able to step into the place of owning their power because they're not being denied and not being shut down because men won't listen to them. This is part of the healing and part of the transformation that must happen for the world to move to a next level. This is a whole other conversation about the next evolution of the world. Unless it shows up in this one, we'll see what happens. So, so two parts of this, I think. One part is that women have had power all the way along, but it's been ignored, suppressed, or otherwise diminished by men. Because to be honest, and this is where I'm going to like strip naked the whole issue, men are freaking scared of women with power. As you've seen with, um, let me think, Hillary Clinton, for example, a woman who had power that scared a lot of men, especially in the establishment. And I'm not saying that it was right or wrong what happened, but that was part of what was in the, the mix and in the conversation and in the um, againstness, is the way of putting it. The force against her was because men are, fr are f absolutely effing scared of women with power. So, so let me qualify that. Many men, not all men, many men are scared of women with power. And so what happens, that's why, I, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this carefully. The mistreatment of women, including rape, a large part of that comes from men's, the men who did that, they do that, their absolute fear of women's power and desire to dominate them through control. Because again, control and domination are parts of power as well. And for a lot of men, they want to, or they're afraid enough that they want to control and dominate so that they don't feel afraid of the other person's power. It's not about love, obviously. It's not about sex, frankly. It's about power. And those men who've, who have, who've done these heinous acts, to be clear, are not in it for the benefits themselves as much as it is about the feeling of, of being in control. And, and I'm not trying to dismiss any of this stuff because there's a whole other conversation that's much deeper than this. But I want to make sure you get the point is that, ladies, your power has been within you since ancient times. In fact, let me say this, that I'm just realizing as I look back at history, many women through history have been burned at the stake, have been drowned in the lake, have been stoned to death, have been otherwise imprisoned because of their power. Women's power, women's rightful power, is something that has been suppressed for centuries. Women were burned as witches because men were afraid of their power. Women were stoned to death because they could turn a man's eye because of the power they wield. There were so many excuses and judgments made up by men at the times to suppress and, and if eliminate women's power by killing them because they're scared of the power. And the problem really comes back to, one is that men are afraid of women, as I said before, the power. But the truth is that men are actually afraid of their own power. Yes, I just said that. Men are afraid of their own power. Because the power that men currently wield isn't real power. It's ego-driven strength and toughness and domination and control, as I mentioned. But real power is having an open heart and vulnerability in a masculine body, which is what men's power really is. And women's power, counterpoint to that, is also that vulnerability, open-heartedness, and truth and integrity that women carry as well. But the problem is, I believe, a lot of the reason why men are scared of women's power is because it shows men where they're not in their true power. And I'm here to say it's time to change. <laughs> there's a distinct shift happening, or at least I feel there's a distinct shift needed because this power struggle is, is absolutely, one, it's ridiculous because it's not meant to be a struggle, it's meant to be unity. It's meant to be alignment 
meant to be collaboration, cooperation and harmony. Because for me, I'm very clear that for women, bringing your power into the world is is what's going to help heal the world. And for men, when we step into our real authentic power, our heart-based power, we find unity and harmony and collaboration and connection with women in a way we've never never done before. Power is an interesting thing, but the power... (laughs) <laughs> I gotta say it. The power of love <laughs> sorry that Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis was in my head for a second there. The ability to express power through love. The express the ability to express power through compassion, to express power through unification, to express power through collaboration, cooperation, togetherness is where the future is gonna be saved. Because at this point in time, as has been demonstrated in many movies, articles and other other um, stories, the way that we are doing with division of power and the, and the, and the againstness of power is what's causing the destruction on this planet. So it's not only your relationship is going to get saved, it's the whole frigging planet. So the power that is available to both men and women, the heart-based source of power that we bring into the world is definitely needed, but frankly it's the thing that's going to save all of us. So the next time ladies that a man demeans denigrates or tries to control you or calls you a bitch because you're showing up in your power recognize that he's scared so don't fight him on it that's the that's that's also a bad move by the way you fight him on it he's going to win because he's stronger usually physically but accept his um not accept wrong word have compassion for his 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 fear try that one it'd be different i know and I'm not saying every situation will call for that, but if you are, if you check in inside and, t- and feel inside and feel that his fear of you is what's driving him, have compassion for him. He might just get it. Now, for many men, that may not be possible. Reality, but for a lot of men, it will be possible to understand that and to appreciate that. There's so much against this happening between uh, for men against women. I was talking to my friend at lunchtime today about how in some ways sexism and I, and I, I, I said an issue with that term because sexism sounds so like just name calling but prejudice and control and abuse of women by men is at least as bad if not worse than racism anti-semitism and other things too because it's happening worldwide across the genders this is like the whole population so part of that issue that challenge is this power struggle I must be listening to your latest conversations, Gina. I don't know. Have I been uh, snooping on you? If you're talking, if you're talking online, I'm not sure. Maybe I've watched some of your broadcasts. If you're doing it privately, we must be on the same wavelength. We will talk when you get into town. We've got some conversations ahead of us. So, um, yeah, you've been talking and thinking about exactly some of these ideas. Then we will, we need, we will be collaborating on this. I know, um, as we've been planting seeds about. So, oh, energetically. Ah, was about energetic. Well. Yes, I'm feeling it. <laughs> so we will, we will talk about that. Yes. So getting back on topic, if there's anything left to talk about, I'm just I'm just sitting with this for a second. Um, we will, but yes, um, this is something that I'm realizing more and more. This is the beginning of something for me, and probably for you too, Gina. We may be bringing this together on this this conversation. There's a shift that I've been talking about for a while now in my talks and in my writings um, that is really needed and also past due. And a part of this transformation is the acceptance and honoring of the power within each gender, clearly. And it's also the acceptance and honoring of the power within ourselves, men and women. It is time that we really accept that we both have power that is appreciated, that's honorable. So you're seeing men and women growing in their personal power. Yes, I agree with you. And I'm not necessarily growing it as much as just simply accepting and appreciating it. It's already in there. We all have the power, but we may be suppressing it or ignoring it or demeaning it in other people, which has been happening a lot. The whole sexism thing I'm talking about with this um, domination culture mindset is a fear of the power. The power's there. It's the fear that we need to... um, resolve, release, heal, transform. And that's part of the work. I know for what I'm bringing in the conversation and we will, again, we will talk. So there's another piece that I can't feel right now. There's, this may be a part two tomorrow, I think, for this. 
But this men, women, and power thing is bigger than just this conversation. It's the start of something. Maybe a movement, maybe a conversation that's going to go deeper. It may be what I've been thinking about for a long time. Sorry, that wasn't meant to be out loud. That was in here. <laughs> There's something else brewing, and I'll get to that later on. But this this topic is is a bigger one than just this talk. There's a distinct, distinct recognition that I'm starting to sort of... Um, integrate for myself so this is me owning what I'm discovering as I'm saying this to you that there is a, a clearly um, yes yes accepting accepting it and owning it and learning how to use it in more responsible ah come on stop that <laughs> I can't do it I'm trying to get this thing to display but I keep getting Ah, uh, what is going on here? Fine. Accepting it and owning it and learning how to use it in a more responsible, heal, healthy, less destructive way. I'm guessing what you said because the see more thing on this on this side of the screen is coming up and I get some to tap it, I'll get something else instead of what I'm asking for. So um <laughs> I try and tap it, it's not working. Alright, fine. So getting back to the topic at hand, I'll read that in the comments afterwards. This is something that I'm really clear about is that we have a lot of room to grow when it comes to power, accept, accepting power in each other and ourselves. And I said it's the power of love jokingly because I said about Huey Lewis was running around in my head for a second there. Um, for those who know the song. Um, that from Back to the Future? No. Yeah, I think it was. Sorry. No, it was... <laughs> I'm totally off track. Let's get back on track for a second. I'm just off the movie land for a second there. Okay. Summarizing. It's heart-based power I'm speaking about primarily. And we've been suppressing it, ignoring it, and controlling it for too many years. I believe there's a time to change that. There's a time to talk about it in a different way. And a chance for all of us, men and women, together and individually, to own our own power, accept it, express it in a way that is heart-based and loving, so it becomes additive, not, not against. That we can come together in harmony, cooperation, and collaboration. That's a much bigger statement than I can put into this to break this down, but that, that gives you something to think about. which is why I've been so adamant about self-love. That's the piece I was thinking about. Um, if, you, if you're watching my broadcast the last couple of weeks, especially I was talking about, I, I launched a practice called the self-love practice or self-love mirror meditation practice on my website. I'm realizing this is, this is one reason why. Because until we learn to love ourselves and really honor and love ourselves, and the mirror practice I offer is a very powerful way of doing it and a very easy way of doing it, in fact. By doing that, you start to recognize your own power because you tap into the power inside, which is love-based, heart-based, centered in who you are, that's your power source. So if you're not sure what your power is, doing this practice or just loving yourself any way you know to do is a way to get there. So I do invite you to look at my self-love practice. I'll put the link in the comments. And if you want to find out what it is, it's my, my website, which is barryselby.com forward slash self-love. Um, but that will get you started on the journey to learning how to accept and own your own power. Because power is something that can be used constructively and destructively as, as Gina commented and with, we're in a world that has tended to reward destructive power versus constructive power and it's the destructive power that controls the constructive power contributes and it's time we started contributing to the world, to each other and to ourselves so using power as a vehicle for addition positive reinforcement of values of consciousness of caring is what the power we have is meant to be expressed as but driven by the ego based power for many generations and the and the macho power of the male patriarchal domination of the world for the last few centuries is actually not as powerful and it hasn't yet realized that so Again, this is a starting point for a topic. It may go a lot deeper than this. This is just a starting idea that's coming up. There's more to come for sure. Um, but I'm not seeing the way through yet. So right now, just so you know, what I'm seeing in my head is like a closed door. Like this is the end of part one. I think maybe part two tomorrow we'll see. No promises, but we'll see what happens. So summarizing quickly, or I should say recapping quickly, this is about power that we all carry. That is heart-based, truly line up with who our values are. And it's not, it, it's, it's, ill advice to express it as an againstness a force to control or or uh, distort other people so I want to say for men out there watching this it's time to get off our high horses 
and to bow in honor of the feminine. Ladies, I invite you to own your power in a way that is respectful of men as well as women, because the temptation may really go against all their history and I understand the temptation. But that power we both wield can help each other and ourselves. So stop beating up on each other, please. It's a simple request. It's a big, it's a big ask, I know. But watching what's happened recently with a lot of friends and friends of friends I've been hearing about with the challenges they face, women particularly, there's work to be done. So my invitation is for you, if you're willing to join me in sharing power in a way that's additive, collaborative and cooperative, collaborative and cooperative, yes, then I invite you to step forward and do that in your circles of friendships, in your with your clients, with your family, with your spouses, with everybody. It's time we all owned our power, accepted it, learned how to use it responsible in healthy and less destructive ways, as Gina put it, will absolutely change the world. So that's my light little talk for the afternoon. <laughs> Thanks for being with me as always. Um, you can find my broadcasts on my business page on Facebook, where these live after they go live on Facebook first, which is Barry Selby author on Facebook, my, that's my business page. Also, you can find them on my YouTube channel, because I do repost to YouTube, which is Barry Selby is the channel, and Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. And then finally, they go to my podcast, um, which is Messages from the Masculine. You can, down you can subscribe and download from there. Oh, Gina, we said, and so my theme, the more we love ourselves and stop beating up on ourselves, the less we beat up on each other, I'm thinking it is. I can't get these comments to appear. This is really interesting. Uh, yeah, somebody's watched. Apparently, they updated Facebook again. So they have to do some weird stuff. So I'll read these comments afterwards. I can't respond to the whole thing because it says see more and I can't tap see more. Nothing for you to worry about. Just my experience. Um, and again, go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love for the self-love practice. Um, and that's it. Oh, and if you want some, if you want to get some help in coaching, counseling, support, go to my website again, which is barryselby.com and click on the Let's Chat button and sign up for a discovery session. And that, I think, is that. Thanks for being with me again. I'll be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I think it will be. That's Labor Day. I should be around. And uh, more will be shared then, perhaps part two of this conversation. Thanks for being with me. And if you have any questions or comments about this broadcast, please put in the comments below. Um, add your thoughts to this, because this is a big topic. I know I just, I just tapped into a little bit of, bit of it today, but there's definitely more to come. So thanks for being with me. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Same time, same back channel. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.